Recently, rumors have been swelling of a danger at Yellowstone National Park. The danger? A brewing supervolcano eruption. The fear of a Yellowstone super eruption, which ultimately went viral, may have begun back in February, when a seismometer called B944 began sending senseless data to a public viewer at the University of Utah Seismographic Station. Now, if it was, <coughs> if it was senseless, then how come it got out to start with? Hmm. Sounds a little odd to me, don't you? But we're going to listen to some more. That really ain't what I wanted to show you, but that's part of it. As George Black reports in The New Yorker, Luckily for most of the U.S., the likelihood this eruption would happen is pretty low, about 1 in 100,000 any given year. If it did happen, it would be pretty devastating, though. Supervolcano super danger The danger of these eruptions isn't just lava in the area around the volcano The ash alone poses a serious threat. Breathing hot ash can result in respiratory burns, and the minerals it contains can irritate the skin and cause abrasions in the eyes and the respiratory system. The pileup of ash on rooftops has resulted in building collapses, and ash accumulation on streets can make roads dangerous, if not impossible, to navigate. And ash in the sky disrupts air travel, by blocking visibility and interfering with electronics. The following map show a simulated distribution of volcanic ash, if Yellowstone were to erupt to its full potential. The scale is in millimeters, 25.4 of which make up an inch. So people in the purple area would be coated with more than an inch of ash, while people in the blue areas would find themselves buried in it. A simulation of the possible distribution of ash from a Yellowstone super eruption in short, a Yellowstone super eruption would disrupt electronics and endanger human health in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and affect other parts of the country. Moreover, a month-long super eruption could affect the global climate for years, even decades. When will it happen? Fortunately, it's also extremely unlikely to happen anytime soon, despite a lot of apocalyptic hand-wringing to the contrary. Thinking about a Yellowstone super eruption is like imagining a large asteroid hitting the Earth, says Jacob Lowenstern, a research geologist with the USGS and scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. It could happen, but it's not something you can plan for or worry about, because it's such a low probability. Post Caldera Lava Flows at Yellowstone Volcano In fact, Yellowstone hasn't erupted at all for 70,000 years, and the probability of a super eruption in any given year is somewhere between 1 in 100,000 and 1 in a million, according to Lowenstern. The most likely thing to happen, when it does erupt is a moderate eruption with a minimal effect outside of Yellowstone. While there are gaps in our volcano monitoring program, we are better off focusing our efforts on those that we can predict and prepare for smaller eruptions, Lowenstern says. If you have a regular eruption that puts sulfur into the atmosphere, it can affect the Earth's climate, he adds. That's the kind of eruption that we should be thinking about. Washington iconic North American birds like the bald eagle and brown pelican are among hundreds of mankind's feathered friends facing threats to their survival due to climate change, researchers said Tuesday. 
more than half of birds in the United States and Canada a total of 314 species are losing critical habitat and food sources as the planet warms, said a report by the National Audubon Society. Meanwhile, another annual report called the State of the Birds 2014, USA, issued by the 23-member US Committee of the North American Bird Conservation Initiative. Y'all did catch that, the North American, you know, North American Union, North American Consulate. I don't give a shit, North American. they making Mexico, United States, and Canada, North America. And you get that, right? Described losses of as much as 46% of birds in deserts and drillings such as Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico since the 1960s. Common backyard birds are becoming less common, and those who breed and eat in the coastal wetlands are also struggling. Birds like the eastern meadowlark and the bobolink have declined by some 40% since 1968, but losses have leveled off since 1990 with the help of significant investments in grassland bird conservation, said the State of the Birds report. Science and conservation, when applied appropriately, can reverse the threats that some species face today, and I think that is an important message," said Smithsonian Secretary Wayne Clow at an event in the U.S. Capitol to discuss the findings. A brown pelican lands on Molly Island near Kali Patria, California on July 3, 2011 However, much work lies before us. The Audubon report found that the bald eagle's summer range could shrink by nearly 75% in the next 65 years, while warming temperatures might make nesting and breeding difficult for birds like the common loon and the Baltimore Oriole. Other state birds at risk include brown pelican Louisiana, California gull Utah, hermit thrush Vermont, mountain bluebird Idaho and Nevada, roof grouse Pennsylvania, purple finch New Hampshire and wood thrush Washington, D.C said the findings. We all will see the effects of changing climate in our own backyards. We just cannot ignore such a sobering wake-up call, said Terry Root, a Nobel Prize winning Stanford University professor and Audubon board member. The report's release coincided with the 100th anniversary of the disappearance of the passenger pigeons, which were once among the most abundant creatures on Earth. The last known passenger pigeon, Martha, died at the Cincinnati Zoo in 1914. We can never forget that we can see something go away forever, said Pete Mara, head of the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center, recalling other species that have disappeared since, including the Carolina parakeet, the Eskimo curlew, Bachman's warbler and the pulley of Hawaii home to one-third of all us federally endangered birds. Mar said the biggest causes of bird declines include habitat loss, urban sprawl, lack of food sources and pollution. Dangers to birds will only increase as the global population swells from its current 7 billion in the coming decades, said US Fish and Wildlife Director Dan Ash. When we think about Martha, and what happened to her kind in the span of about five decades, think about what will happen in the three or four decades between now and the middle of the century, as we add another two plus billion people to the planet," Ash said. It means that there will be less space for the rest of what we call biological diversity. He called for people to recommit themselves to conservation and environmental awareness in order to prevent further extinctions.